Hello again everybody, this is John and Glenn with Best Price Nutrition. Today we're going to be reviewing MuscleTech uh, NeuroCore. And real quick before we get started, this is only our second video standing, so if you didn't see the first one, I just want to point out that I am not short, Glenn just happens to be tall. I'm like 5'11 and a half. He's don't don't right. short me on the half inch. But he, um... <laughs> That's what she said. Well, right, see, there you go. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so just wanted to make that clear. Because according to Jeff, who's behind the camera, there's quite the discrepancy of what it looks like on video. So, just wanted to make that clear. I, I am not short. Anyways, onto the product. It's uh, Muscle Tech NeuroCore. It's their newest pre-workout product. Um, you want to run through real quick the ingredients. In that. We'll just go through them one at a time and go through, you know, the, um, the effects of them and, and, you know, speak on the dose and so on and so forth. So, okay. let's go ahead. And yeah, first ingredient is beta-alanine. Uh, from, if you've noticed from videos in the past, we've gone over beta-alanine. Um, it, it helps with your, your endurance or your, your workout to, or the amount of energy you can put out throughout the workout. Uh, as you're working out, your body uh, releases a lot of acid, and that acid builds up, and what that does is buff, the beta-alanine buffers the acid. So when you get to the ninth or 10th rep, you get that burn. Beta-alanine beta can buffer that while you get to the 11th, 12th rep. Not only does it work that way within that uh, set, also throughout the entire workout, so because that acid does build up, so at the end of the workout, you're not, a, you know, don't have as much of that burn. Um, yeah, know. yeah. That, I mean, that's that's basically the gist of it. Your body naturally produces it in your liver to maintain intracellular pH. The the your body burns, you know, uses lactic acid for fuel. The acid that dissociates gets neutralized by beta alanine. Mm -hmm. Supplementing it has been, you know, proven in a lot of studies to be beneficial. Um, as Glenn said, not only within, you know, your set and making it more explosive, but since that acid accumulates throughout your workout. Um, next ingredient is citrulline. Yeah, citrulline is an ingredient that's in here. It's their pump ingredient. Uh, citrulline, when it gets in the body, it does convert into arginine, and the theory is on paper that arginine then gets converted into nitric oxide and you get a pump. But if you watch our videos in the past, we've talked about it. Um, it just, on paper, it, it works, but in the body, it doesn't. Your body's. Uh, um, tries to maintain homeostasis, so it doesn't like to go into that state of, of uh, dilating blood vessels or nitric oxide production, so it produces an enzyme, uh, enzyme called arginase, which will inhibit that from happening. Yeah, so in theory, you know, we've seen plenty of ingredients that would make sense that, hey, this will increase nitric oxide, but the negative feedback loops in your body seem to fight that, so it tends to be rate limiting, and the same holds true with citrulline. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, like Len said, it can convert to arginine and thought to increase uh, nitric oxide. The next ingredient is going to be creatine HCL. You know, this is another form of creatine lacking in research. Mm -hmm. uh, creatine monohydrate is the proven form. It's one that yeah. all the research has been done on. Companies have come out with other forms, bounded to malic acid, whatever, HCL, alkalized forms, you name it. Bottom line is creatine monohydrate is the one that has the research on it. It's the one that's been demonstrated to be effective. The other forms have come out for companies to say, hey, try our revolutionary mm -hmm. form and charge you more money for yeah, it. Yeah, I noticed that those cost a lot more than your basic creatine monohydrate. They really should yeah, and, and, and with the, with, without the research to back them up, they're just piggybacking off the research that's been done on creatine monohydrate. So, and the idea with the creatine HCL is, oh, you can take less of it because it absorbs mm -hmm. better. There's no proof of that. So one gram per scoop in this is a pretty small dose. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and on the label, it, it does say one scoop versus three scoops. So if you do three scoops, you're going to be paying, um, you know, it depends upon where you buy it. But right now, it's only exclusive at the GNC, I believe. So. Yeah. Um, it's like thirty dollars, so you pay thirty bucks for fifteen servings. So good luck with that. Um, next ingredient? Yeah, geranium extract. Um, it says it's one hundred and seventy-seven milligram. Uh, that if that were the true one three dimethylamine, I, I'm guessing that it's just not standardized for that. Yeah, it can't yet, be yeah. because most of the time you see. Uh, 20, uh, I'd say 15 to 25 milligrams. So um, there's no way of really knowing how much of the actual active ingredient. Especially there. if they're showing a three scoop serving size. So we don't yeah. know the percent of the active ingredient. It may very well be the correct amount, but we just don't know because they're not revealing it on the label. So, uh, And as we've gone over past with geranium, uh, very good for energy, mental focus. Uh, it's an ingredient that uh, has some controversy surrounding it because of some organizations maybe banning it, uh, it becoming illegal. As of right now, I think what was it? Waiting? WADA, the uh, World Anti-Doping Agency, banned it in 2009. They put it on their 2010 ban list. Some other organizations, sports, you know, you know, you always double check them to make sure, have banned it specifically. Now there's a misnomer that it, you can test positive for an amphetamine from it. You cannot, it is chemically impossible. The structure without getting into it makes that impossible. Now the effects are similar to an amphetamine. However, it does not, going to make you test positive for an amphetamine. If somebody has failed the test, they fail the test because that specific ingredient mm -hmm. was in fact banned. Also, the the research on it in terms of the you know the the 
pharmacology of it. The, the last one really done on it was back in the 50s, so there needs to be an update on it. You know, with stimulants, that's the one time we allow for a little bit of anecdotal evidence because stims, you could take them and, and feel it, you know, in terms of our criteria, so we can kind of, you know, get some, you know, results based upon that. But the reality is, is there need to be more peer-reviewed research on it, but the main effect people report from taking it are what? Uh, energy, mental focus, um, uh, drive, things like that. Yeah, so. mainly the, the focus, the euphoria is typically, which here I know you've taken it on its own. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I've I taken it with euphoria, other stuff, but you've taken it with But I do get that energy, mental focus from it, so. So yeah. bottom line with uranium, we'd like to see some more peer-reviewed research on it. There's a lot of hyperbole as to the danger of it. None of that's been proven either, so bottom line is we all would benefit from some more peer-reviewed research on it. Uh, next is going to be caffeine. Yeah, caffeine's in there. It's 110 milligrams per scoop. They're recommending you can go up to three scoops, so it's a pretty hefty dose of 330 milligrams. But at the one scoop, 110 milligrams, a good dose of it, similar to about a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, again, caffeine's got a lot of research on it. At, at a dose like this, you should get a good uh, energy boost from it. As long as you're not overly tolerant to stimulants, sometimes people, you know, they'll take two or 300 milligrams a day. Your body can become... Um, you know, can get used to that. So that's when you're taking four or five, six hundred milligrams a day, and then you just run into. You know, yeah, there could be there could be some issues once you get over that five hundred mm -hmm. milligram dose. Now it varies a little bit between body weight and individual to individual, and how sensitive you are to stimulants. So to to in inhibit that from happening, what you can really do is just take your stims maybe you know three four days a week. Give yourself the other days off. Um, if you do decide to take it straight through every day, you know, take it for maybe four or eight weeks and then give yourself maybe about four weeks off to recover yeah. from that. And while you're off, if you do happen to get withdrawal headaches, you know, you can take a small dose of caffeine, like a cup of green tea or something mm -hmm. like that. But that'll get your body sensitive to the stims again, and that's, that's really what it comes down to if that's why you're taking it. So, uh, Next ingredient? Uh, rhodiola extract. Um, it says it's applying celadroside. I know that there's, there's two, uh, I guess, constituents inside of uh, rhodiola, rosavin and the celadroside, and, and what uh, they're finding and what I have also found is that it's supposed to be the more active form um, than the rosavin. So what it help, it's helpful for, there's a lot of research done on it for uh, depression and uh, it's protecting the cells uh, during times of oxi oxidative stress. Um, that was originally what made it popular. Was yeah. When the whole cortisol nonsense was going mm -hmm. on, where everyone thought you could drop 20 pounds by reducing cortisol and you know all that stuff, which has kind of since been thrown by the wayside. I think you mentioned too there was something with some uh, some cell death. Um, yeah, cell it, death, it, it, it can. It's necrosis. been shown it can help with preventing uh, cell death during times of a lot of oxidative stress. So, as how you know, in terms of how that uh, applies to taking it in a pre-workout supplement. There's not much of a tie in there. So I it could mean, be neuroprotective, but could we'd be like neuroprotective, to say so. Yeah. Um, there needs to be some more research on that as well. Is exactly. That, would that be, yeah. exactly. So, um, the next ingredient, the DMAE. Yeah, DMAE is very popular for mental alertness, uh, focus. Uh, yeah. so just some short-term short -term studies mm -hmm. that have demonstrated that, that to be a little bit effective there. Um, and then the last ingredient, venpocetine. Yeah, venpocetine can help with enhancing uh, blood flow in the brain. Um, it's popular in a lot of... Uh, brain boosting or cognitive function. Because they found a lot of, most of the research is done with older individuals mm -hmm. and an ability to increase memory. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of these ingredients, when it comes to that, we'd like to see some research done on young athletes to see, you know, how, yeah. if, it's, if it's effective there. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll find with some of these ingredients, they're effective once somebody falls below a certain baseline, and then exactly. these can help bring your body up to normal. So we're not saying that it's, it's not, um, but, you know, it would be nice to see that. And mm -hmm. like you said, been posting has been in some other stuff, too. So oh, yeah, those are the neurotropics, uh, you know, mm -hmm. based that. Those are the smart drugs. I think they're also, you know, referred to as. So, that's and I think that's where the product gets its name from is Neurocore. I mean, that's what they're trying to promote with it. Um, you know, the bottom line, as mentioned before, is <clears throat> the issue is going to be with Muscle Tech is always going to be the cost of the product. Yeah. They do a lot of advertising. You're going to pay for the advertising. I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, some of the other products tend to be filled with a bunch of. Um, proprietary blend, you have no idea how much of anything's in there, and there tends to be like 100 ingredients. This is better in this regard because they do yeah. actually tell you how much is they in do. there. This is a first for them to tell you uh, what you're getting of each ingredient, which is nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. the question is just how the cost is going to shake out when, you know, uh, retailers like us get it, and, you know, we are discounters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, as of right now, we don't have it. That's why you're not seeing the product here. So we're making this video in advance because we do have the ingredients label in front of us, but like we said, the pricing that's out there for it now, it's it's quite expensive, and you can yeah. get these ingredients for much less elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, If you guys have any questions in the meantime, feel free to post them in the comments section. We're happy to answer them. Also, check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you. Thank you.